I have this problem. Somebody made the worst decision they could ever have made politically when they let me be on the streets for three years. Prior to me being homeless and on the streets for three years, including after I had been diagnosed with an illness that I did not actually believe I had, and including after losing my job and losing all of my friends and losing all record that I even existed, including after all of this, I was left on the streets for three years. And during the time I was on the streets for three years, I did not smoke pot once. I didn't get drunk once. I didn't engage in an act of prostitution once. And I would see how people would be when they were with me, just me, even if it was one or two people, maybe three people, and just me. And I would say, no, I'm not interested in smoking or I'm not interested in drinking. And I would say that if you smoke or drink, I'm going to leave. I would see how they would react around me. And then I would see what would happen. Oftentimes when it was somebody that worked at the shelter or somebody that maybe it used to be on the street, now they had a shelter job when they came up. Or somebody that was, you know, one of those people you talk about when you're on the street. Or they, somebody just came up and they gave us a six pack. Why would somebody just give you a six pack? Well, they saw us hanging out. I mean, they just thought it would be cool to give us a six-pack. It would be nice. No, they weren't. You don't live in one of those nice high-rise condos in downtown and give homeless people a six-pack just because you have goodwill about you. There's a reason you do that. Just like those guys in those sedans that drive up and they have a pocket full of 20s or sometimes hundreds. And they just roll up and roll the window down. And then they just start handing it out. And then they drive away. You expect when you're on the street, oh my gosh, look at that, that's a great thing. What a great person they did that. And that's not what that's about. And if you talk to people one-on-one -on -one after something like that, they know. But that's not what the hype is. That's not what sustains the demand for all of the other society and the political spectrum that emerges around that. You know, when I was invited to sleep inside a tent with somebody, including in an area that other people who I used to know and claimed that they knew me once upon a time ago, where every once in a while have these activist events at, talking about the rights of people that are homeless on the street. Things would happen while we were sleeping. You see, I trained myself that when something like that happened, I automatically woke up. I've been doing this for years. If I'm sleeping and there are certain things, I meditated one day, I implanted into my own unconscious, if this is happening, wake me up. And what I would notice is that in the middle of the night, these things would be happening. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would see it and sometimes it would be horrible. I would cry or I would be angry, usually very angry. But then I would try to keep track. And as the day unfolded, see, well, did something like that happen? Oftentimes it was either a suggestion, an option, maybe a prophecy, portending. And then as I engaged with the day, something literal would manifest, ma manifest as part of whatever it was that I'd seen. But usually what I'd seen was something that was morally repulsive to me. And the whole intent was to wake up so that I was aware of it being implanted into my unconscious so that as the day progressed, it didn't just come up as if somehow I had attracted it. As if it was an expression of who I actually was. That's not what it is. They left me on the streets for three years. Every time I would be on the cusp of trying to get something for myself, there would always be a goddamn drug deal. And usually I would say, I'm sorry, I don't do this. You told me, you knew, you understood. Yeah, but just this time, no. And then they would keep, and then it would be a conflagration. I'd yell, I'd move on. And then I wouldn't talk to them again. Maybe I'd see them a couple months later. But what happened in May of 2019 is I met some people, and they were very nice. And they did that thing, that goddamn fucking program. One of the men said he had diabetes. The first day we got along, it was great. The second day, I introduced, he introduced me to his friends. One of them was a woman who had a tent. Toward the end of the second day, she asked me if I know about this organization. It helps women in the sex trade. She says, if you want, you can go say, you can go talk to them. I can help you set up an appointment. I'm like, I'm not interested. Thank you. But I wasn't going to be judgmental. 
right? She was nice. I, she had a right to her own experience, seek whatever resources she thought were available. I'd never heard of this before, at least not here, right? But then that night, the man with diabetes, he didn't have fucking diabetes. And he pulled it out and he shot up right in the fuck in front of me. And usually some, and that hadn't actually happened like that before. You know that? And I said to myself, there's a couple of things you can do. You already know what this is. Somebody made a fucking deal. And what happens is, is if you don't fucking secure their fucking drug deal for them somehow, somebody ends up dead. And then whatever it is that is working towards your advantage right now ends up going to fucking shit. And the next time around is even worse than it was this time. And so I sat there and I was calm. I didn't do anything. I didn't partake anything. I kept my temper. I got through the goddamn fucking 72 hour closure period. And then somebody asked me some questions at McDonald's. And the next thing you know, I was offered the first shower I had been able to take in six fucking months because I don't take a shower at one of these bullshit Christian service providers that want you to watch the blood of Jews off of you. And now I've been inside, but I'm not allowed to talk to anybody. I'm not provided with any income. I'm not allowed to have a fucking job. We're over two years now. This is a little past the period where during that same year, I watched somebody who had been pinging $15 million off of my email for several months, 15 million, 15 million in purple. They literally coded the line of email purple for 15 fucking million dollars. She's on the goddamn fucking floor of the goddamn House of Representatives in a late night session. We're talking like 1 o'clock a.m. Requesting 15 million fucking dollars for a needle exchange program under some emergency civil rights appropriation bill. And it was like a goddamn fucking spike. Right in my fucking, and I had seen it. I had seen her set that fucking deal up. I had seen them all. I heard them. And now every goddamn fucking day is a reminder that you sold me for fucking drugs. It's the worst decision you ever made, leaving me on the streets, because everything about it is contrived from the absolute fucking top. You don't belong where you are. The reason they are corrupt is because of you. What did you get for that $15 million? What did you set up in your own personal kickback scheme on that $15 million spike steal? Because everything you and your cohort have done has been absolutely a desecration. Even to fucking people on the fucking street. It's the most dangerous, unsafe thing that could possibly happen to people on the street. You're on the street. Somebody you don't really know what and who she is, but she looks like somebody you used to know. She keeps appearing. People keep trying to get you to act like someone you're not. You're constantly being tortured over and over and over again if you don't agree to sell drugs, if you don't agree to hook up this drug deal for us. We're just going to send you all the way back to the fucking beginning at even more beat down fucking level than you were before. Four. Now I'm inside and every day is a reminder of how completely slanderous and libelous and what a complete total fucking bullshit lie everybody that claims that they're in some policy making position has been engaged in. I don't know what you thought you were going to get out of it, but it's really hard. It's really hard that we're here where we are right now. You need me to do something to acknowledge that I agreed to you characterizing me as your drug pipeline. And you refuse to talk to me. And you refuse to admit that you did these things. And you refuse to do what you could do, which is not really that fucking hard. And I hear you. You're still trying to make an excuse for those completely bratty, and conceited, judgmental projections on to me without even talking to me. And you know what it is. You know what it is. It's your drug. It's your fucking drug. 
You are sadistic and you get off on this. And it's killing the fucking planet. It's killing the fucking planet.